Self-defense as a whole is very fickle. There's no one way of really perfectly doing anything. Recently, I tried out a martial art that was completely self-defense based, and you guys had some opinions about it. And frankly, you're allowed to, even if they're super wrong and dumb. This is total rubbish. I don't like it. This stuff is nonsense. Keeping your hand on your head all the time and just wiggle your elbows. Is this a joke or for real? What if someone punches you in the liver? The liver! Well, I've always been a firm believer there's only one way to figure out if things work. Subject yourself to large amounts of pain and screw. Now, if you weren't around for last week's video, where were you? I was expecting you to be there. I think the main criticism that this style got was the guard. Just stacking the hands on top of the head. Okay. And you put it in different positions uh, depending on what I'm dealing with. The style Keezy keeps this defensive posture called the pensador, which as you see in the video, dedicates your entire arms, elbows, and hands to blocking mostly your head. The main issue that people had with that, as you probably saw, the body is wide open. The reason everybody had those comments weren't for bad reason in some situations. Typically in a high guard, in Muay Thai, Dutch style kickboxing, MMA, boxing, the elbows are dedicated to blocking the body and the hands are dedicated to blocking the head. But what's a little different about Kizi, 90% of this guard is just dedicated to blocking the head from what I've learned at least. And I think I have a theory on that. All right, look, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna watch a bunch of street fights and then I'm gonna make a little spreadsheet here. Very advanced science that we're working with here. I'm gonna watch, I don't know, 25 clips and I'm gonna mark if the first punch goes to the body. You know what? I'll mark if any punch goes to the body just to prove my point. If any punch goes to the body, I'll mark that whole clip as a body. If all punches go to the head, it stays in the head column. Head, not a single punch went to the body. Oh man, the guy's getting too much. This is a, <laughs> I did not expect I can't show most of these, because they're, you know, it's violence. Three shots, but this is the part. That's just so much water. <laughs> okay, that one goes to the head column. Begrudgingly, of course, I spent, I don't know, the next 30 to 40 minutes watching these fight videos. Punch to the head, guy falls in the train tracks, another punch to the head, third punch to the head, Fourth punch to the head. Totally is not a regular part of my day. Oh, he rocked him! Did not see that. Oh my gosh, that is that man's full butt. That was his, uh, But a theme started to arise. Punch the head, punch the head, punch the head, punch the head, punch the head. Punch the head, punch the head, punch the head. Kind of crazy. Outside of the Del Taco, too. Oh, these guys have sticks. Stick to the head. And my theory was, I don't know, pretty much proving itself to Nothing be true. Yet. Oh, I kicked him. Oh my gosh, you got hit with a nasty sweep. So out of 25 clips, three body shots were thrown. Not three punches to the, three body shots total. Actually, interesting fact, more often did people grapple than they did punch to the body. Actually, I did miss one. There was four. Two kicks, one of them you already saw. The other one happened about two and a half minutes into these two guys fighting. And they were like, I guess I can kick too? As for the punches, most of them came during grappling exchanges. One of which was because a guy was getting ganged up on so bad there was nowhere else left to punch but his body. And while yes, a small bit of research and math just proved why it makes sense to cover the head so much, I still wanna prove all the commenters wrong. So I still need to spar. And because a lot of the comments were about knees and uppercuts and elbows, I'm gonna spar Muay Thai folk. Which means I should probably start treating my body right. Which is exactly why I drink AG1. AG1 is one, the sponsor of today's video, two, a foundational nutrition supplement, and three, something tasty that I drink on a regular basis. This is the travel pack. Four, it's unbelievably easy to use. Look, it's all green. I usually drink this in the mornings. I use a little bit of ice. I use a little drop of lemon juice. 
for the taste. You can drink it just like this though, and it still tastes good. It tastes like, uh, you get kind of like a green apple-y, a hint of pineapple. I've actually recently cut out on energy drinks, which, it's actually not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. But around the same time, I started drinking AG1 and I don't feel like a drop in energy levels or focus. In fact, AG1 supports both of those things. Also supports your mood, which- Look at me. Could I do this if I was in a bad mood? I'm skipping. That's a good mood thing. Don't tell anybody I did that. There's also just a broad range of nutrients, micronutrients, phytonutrients. I mean, I've never fought a nutrient before. Whatever a phytonutrient is, it sounds cool. They very carefully selected all the nutrients that they use, ones that are easier to break down, the ones that your body can handle. If you're gonna train hard when you're in the gym or you're training for self-defense, you might as well train hard outside of the gym. If you wanna do that by drinking AG1, you can go to drinkag1.com slash Sensei Seth, or you can scan this QR code that I've neatly placed right there. If you scan that code, you can get a year supply of the D3 plus K2, uh, and you get five free travel packs with your first subscription. Uh, thank you to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to proving people wrong. Now, the moves that we're gonna be testing out today against the Muay Thai guys. One, we're gonna really heavily rely on this guard, obviously. In fact, I'm gonna try and keep it the entire time. Two, I wanna throw a lot of elbows. I wanna throw elbows at people's heads. I wanna throw elbows at people's bodies using the ram attack. I wanna throw elbows at people's hands when they're punching me. He also taught me how to throw some punches out of the stance, so I'm gonna utilize that as well. The last thing that we learned on the day that I really liked were some foot sweeps. We didn't touch on them a lot, but I like them, especially after off-balancing them with the ram attack. Other than that, as far as blocking the body goes, I guess I should probably ask the guy who taught me all this. What's up? What's going on? How are you, sir? A bunch of people had like one question that I'm sure you've never heard before. How do you block the body in this situation? Is your liver exposed? Uh, well, you know, we briefly looked at some of the islands. The, the system does have uh, methods to shield the torso as well. That's what I figured, to be honest. Okay. The system actually wants you to throw the kick uh, because the way they look at it, it gives them access to attack the kick or to gain control over it. Here, they'll come down right. to cover in a different way as part of the shielding process. But all of this assumes a agreed upon fighting measure. Right. Very much like uh, sport based you know, systems. You know, I stand in front of you and we do an exchange. You know, when you're training, you kind of have to do that. One of the main things the system does is uh, aggressive forward pressure, violent aggressive forward pressure. As soon as you realize it's a fight, yeah, just ram attack them with everything you've got. Ram attack them? Okay. Right, and then continue to fire elbows until it's done. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't wait for them to line up. Don't yeah. wait for them to stand in front of you. There's right. no fist bump. Get them. Just get them? Aggressive force. Oh, yeah. man. My sparring partners are not going to want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been in full sumo prep lately. So this will be the first time that I've sparred in probably like three months. I ended up using Alex's elbow guards which either means that Alex has huge biceps or my biceps are medium woman sized. Hard pill to swallow either way. I started off the first round with Coach Alex and I'll be honest, I did way too much backing up. And with my hands on top of my head not able to long guard, I was able to get picked off a little bit more. If you're gonna use this ram attack, boom, and hit them and they move backwards, you have to be aggressive enough to keep that short range, which is what I really wanted. Once I started throwing punches, I found a little bit more success. And I actually felt like I found a little bit of a groove blocking the kicks and then also attacking those punches with the elbows. Elbowing with elbowers on a day that they practice elbowing, in retrospect, was the hardest way I could have done this. For the second round, I came out a lot more aggressive. I'm still not super comfortable with throwing elbows to people who are moving in, so I kind of showed elbows more than I throwed elbows. I told Michael before the round that he could hit me a little bit harder to the body. Because I wanted to test the guard, and if the guard didn't pass, I wanted to know. What about his body? Do you feel like it was like too open? 
I think with a guard that high, it's probably a little too open for in general, but with what he was doing today, that was that close range was hard to deal with today. It's, just, it's very hard. Yeah, I imagine it's a lot of work. Yeah. For round three, I went into shark mode. I just went ballistic. I wanted the aggression, I wanted the elbows, I wanted to move as fast as I possibly could. He's trying to throw a lot of elbows, I will say that. <laughs> I feel like this big man trying to come on to me. That's what I feel like. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't try to come on to him, okay? I have a wife. Maybe I shouldn't have tickled him. How's it working? I'd say it's like 50 50. Like, I, I get caught sometimes, I get caught sometimes anyway. I'm definitely tired. It's just very labor intensive. I think it's very high output for sure. Yeah. Round four was a longer range striking session than I had done pretty much all day. I didn't really commit to moving in, and he didn't really commit either, so I spent most of the time trying to be defensive and strike his punches with my elbows. I'll be honest, I was also getting pretty tired at this point, and didn't really want to move that fast. Every time his elbows come up, he's got body for days, all you gotta do is find that angle. You gotta step off, your yeah. body kick, step off, your body sh Honestly, it was, uh, it was really intimidating. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, guess the, the movement too that he does, um, even just standing there stagnant with his elbows, that was enough of pressure for me mentally. So he uh, was really, really effective at sparring with me. Arms are definitely getting a little tired, but I think that's, this is not something you're supposed to do for three, three minute rounds, five, three minute rounds, eight, two minute rounds, whatever. This is something you're supposed to go bah, 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 bang, and then that's supposed to be it. But when you're testing the efficacy of something, you have to find a middle ground of doing it without hurting people and you know making sure it works rather than just bam bang. Now the last round definitely ended up being the hardest one. This is a tall, lanky dude with a good long guard, fast hands, and quicker knees. Because I'll be honest, he nullified my elbows pretty well. Because my arms were pinned to my head, he stayed on the outside of my arms. He did a good job of controlling my head and my posture. He was definitely keeping them like way up, so you could just tell the elbows were on his mind. So as soon as you got close, you know the elbows were coming. So if you are ready, you know, you gotta make sure to defend yourself for taking big damage. It's like a full charge. Did, did it feel comfortable? Uh, absolutely not. My goal was. Pose, make sure he doesn't get too close. Make sure I'm covering those hands. Good guard. Really good clinch. The main adjustment that I felt like I made was typically if I have gloves on, I'm gonna pin it here because I'm not too worried about much else happening and it takes up so much space. I can understand why you would go like this because if you don't have the gloves taking up that much space, you've got to support it in a different way. Actually, once I mixed in the punches from underneath, I was kind of here and I'd throw a punch over top and over top and it worked out pretty well. Obviously, I got hit by a lot of body shots. The aggressiveness, I wasn't as aggressive as I should have been. This also isn't a fight. I don't want to make any excuses for it. I, I still stand by my theory. I like it in situations. If it were out here, I would feel more comfortable doing it. Um, if it were in there, I would do what I'm used to to doing, which is sparring from a long range and striking a bunch and keeping people on the edge. Which I did, by the way, just to compare the two. And guess what? It worked better because kickboxing has evolved into what we have now. There are things you can and cannot do, which forms a style of fighting to look a certain way and work better against itself. Which finally brings us to the problem with self-defense. Yeah, I said the title of the video in the video. I said, maybe it's the title actually, I don't even know at this point. This was a test of self-defense techniques. Techniques completely designed to solve the problem of someone attacking you in the streets when you're not prepared. What I just did was I tested those techniques in one of the most reliable ways to test techniques. It's sparring. But I can only theorize how these techniques would work when I do this. Obviously, it's completely different than a real all-out bare-knuckle fight. But how do you test a real bare-knuckle fight? I've done a lot of simulations and tests and sparring, and to be honest, you can't really test it without people getting seriously hurt. I've done some crazy stuff where people did get hurt. <laughs> I fought on a bus, 
I've done active shooter drills with simulation rounds. I've done multiple attacker simulations, all of which I felt like helped me in a way. But in any of those situations, you could point to something and be like, this is the reason you couldn't get him off her. It's because you couldn't hit him. This is the reason you couldn't elbow him. It's because he had gloves on. This is the reason you couldn't win this fight. It's because you didn't want to accidentally throw him off a bridge. That's your friend. Of course you didn't want to hurt your friend. All of which are true. Those are all real reasons that I couldn't make this a real fight. And you kind of almost never can. It's midnight before the video comes out and I started this video sheerly based off of the issue that I wanted to get back the people who were commenting and be like, hey, you're wrong. You're the issue with self-defense, but they're not. You're allowed to say all these things about this style. Um, people who train in martial arts and learn how to fight first and, and fight under that pressure, I think have the best aptitude of fighting. But I don't think they have a realistic outlook on what all fights look like outside of a cage. Like, there's no perfect way to solve the problem of being attacked. That's what's hard and what's scary. But in that hopeless exploration, um, I think you become much better equipped as time goes on. So when I see a style like Keezy, I'm going to learn as much as I can from it. And then I'm going to try and use it in any way that I can, because when a time comes, hopefully it doesn't, I want to be as prepared as possible. And I implore you, have doubts, but be willing to answer doubts on your own, instead of putting them out into space and then letting them float away. Because having answers to questions is better than having questions. Do me a favor and subscribe, please.